today we're going to be turning this stock LJ into this. All right, we're back here at WFL. We got another fresh build. This is a uh, 2006 LJ with uh, every chrome accessory known to man. And the high lift mount on the hood. We got the six Smitty Built bumper with the duct tape Smitty Built winch. Uh, awesome fender flares, 33 inch Toyos. Nobody cares about that. We're getting rid of everything. We're doing one tons. We're doing a, a high pinion Ford kingpin axle in the front and a 14 bolt in the rear. Linked front and rear with a bunch of Moto Built parts. And this thing is going to be rad. Gonna get rid of everything that's uh, not the best aesthetically and not the best in the uh, suspension sense and gonna make it all good make it all work well and uh exit stage left lj's up on the rack and uh We've taken about 50% of it off, as you can see. Uh, transfer case, skid plate, axles, exhaust, drive lines, rear bumper, front bumper, pretty much everything that's not cool. He decided he's gonna go with an Atlas on this build, so of course we gotta get rid of the stock transfer case. We're gonna be throwing that in there. We got a full Moto-built four-link uh, skid plate and cross number setup. We're gonna get that put in there. And just for clarification, we are using the Moto-built modular skid plate system that has link mounts at the frame, but we will be installing the WFO-built front Ford Kingpin axle and rear factory disc brake 14 bolt with our link kit and link mounts at the axle side. Just a few minutes ago, I came through and cut all the brackets off the rear of the frame. Gonna come back through with a grinder, clean it all up, make it look good and prep it for some new parts. Ready for something cool, because lately it's been a lot of new Jeeps. Now we're getting into something older with some newer axles, some bigger tires. Full party. You distracted me, Chris. <laughs> Who the hell is interrupting my Kung Fu? Oh, hi. Uh, well, we're back on the LJ. Uh, we got all the motor built stuff on here, uh, cross member wise. Got the sides welded on, got the skid plate mocked in there. They don't provide a specific transmission mount, so I had to design my own. I'm kind of working on that right now, checking clearances and making sure everything fits in there okay. Hopefully by the end of the day, everything will be finished up here and we can start working on where we're gonna put the rear axle and get everything in there. Not a whole lot else going on. Just kind of focusing on this right now. Got the Atlas stabbed in there. Gonna get the linkage hooked up to that once I get everything finalized where it's gonna be mounted. Hop up top, put the boot back on, everything look nice and shiny and uh, that's about it. We're, we're making good progress over here and hopefully in the next uh, week we can have axles hanging under here and have something a little more exciting for you guys. Yeah. So right here we're removing the factory tank, cut out the factory rear cross member for that tank and installed the Genrite 24 and a half gallon. Welcome back everybody, it's a Friday morning and uh, of course we're back on the LJ. I got the fuel tank mounted in there, which means pulled the axle down off the rack. I got the uh, WFO truss and the WFO pinion guard mount sitting on there. We're gonna get all this burned on there, put it underneath the Jeep, set it up against the back of the fuel tank, stretch this thing as far as we can and we're gonna have an axle getting under this thing pretty soon. Once we get that all done, gotta cut towers into the uh, rear of the frame get the sway bar hooked up, get the shocks in there, get the bumps in, get the bump pads on the axle, get all the link mounts final welded. And then once we get everything done in the rear, set our ride height, go to the front, match everything up there, we'll be golden. Doing a Kermit voice. Hey guys! You're not filming this, are you? 
Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday! We're back on the LJ today, and as you can see, rear axle is being held up by ratchet straps, which means got the front axle under it, measuring for links, got the truss all welded on there, got the link mounts tacked on, being a little tentative there, so we make sure everything's in the right spot. Gonna get all three links hooked up, and then we're waiting on a pitman arm, get the pitman arm on the box, get a drag link and a track bar in there, and we'll be ready to start cycling, put coilovers all four corners, and party on. <laughs> Want me to say? Okay guys, as you can see, back on the LJ again. Had to swap off of the front axle because we were waiting on parts. Came back to the rear, made some custom towers, Frenched them into the frame here, got the coilovers in. Just recently here got the bumps tacked in place so I can get everything set up when it comes to lower shock mount so I can get the proper amount of up travel. Always want to leave a little bit of shock shaft showing at full bump so that it can articulate. Got that all figured out. Pretty much in the rear all I have left to do, slap a drive line in, set my drive line angle in the rear. Put a sway bar in, limit straps and brake lines. You come up to the front here with me. We got the moto built fenders set up here on the front of the Jeep, just so we can get an idea of where we can bump everything out, where the tires are gonna hit. So far, it looks like everything's gonna clear pretty well, so as soon as I get that axle hung in the rear, we're gonna get a track bar and a drag link in the front. We may have a little bit of a drive line issue with the upper link mount, but it's something we can resolve, so we're gonna burn that bridge when we get to it, as they say. And yeah, making good progress, and hopefully by the end of this week, we can have her on the ground. Maybe not on coils, but definitely on bumps. So go get it! Back on the LJ, as expected. It's kind of the video you're watching right now is about an LJ build. Um, today we're on the front. Got towers tacked in. Thought we were going to do tube towers. Turns out the uh, WFO 5322s, something like that. Those ended up working in there, so I trimmed those down, got them working. Currently tacking in these lower shock tabs. Everything cycled the bump. Got the bumps tacked in last night. Got bump pads put on. Got the sway bar hooked up over here. That's all tacked in. Gonna get these last two things kind of buttoned up. Go around the whole Jeep through a hefty tack on everything. We're gonna be setting it on the ground, putting tires on it. Seeing how she looks at full bump. Tyler. 
Tyler, what do you have to say? <laughs> now that we have that insightful information from Tyler, took a little bit of a field trip for today's video on the LJ. Uh, as you can see, it's 20 feet from where it was last time. We got shocks in with coils this time, got the whole rear painted and finalized. Front's got everything welded up, so it's all, you know, not gonna fall apart for flex test. And uh, right now, we have it pretty much maxed out for what flex we can get. We have the motor belt corners going on. So I wanted to get it flexed out so we can get measurements of where the tire is gonna sit in that wheel well where I have to trim them, because we did get blanks. And then we're gonna slap the fender flares on top of that. A few more cosmetic things, a lot more welding and painting in the front, and we'll be ready to go. And uh, as Tyler said, Back here on the LJ for us, it's been like two and a half weeks. For you guys, it's probably been about 10, 15 seconds, but everything's stripped off the front, stripped off the rear. It was all off at powder coat and paint. Front fenders are back in, so I'm gonna be installing those here in a minute. And uh, the rear fenders will be coming in a couple days. Had to wire up, well, work on wiring up, so I haven't finished this. The uh, front turn signals that go into the new motorbuilt fenders. But yeah, everything's off at, or soon to be coming back from paint right now. and. After that's all done, she's gonna be going back together and be hitting the road and get out of here. All right, well, as you can see, since the last time, all of our parts came back from paint, everything's bolted on there. Done a few little test drives, and now it's time to take her on a maiden voyage and see how she does, see if I mess anything up or not. So, let's go. All right, well, we're uh, taking her on the block real quick just to shake all the bumps out, gonna hit the speed bumps over here, have to see how she handles. As you guys seen, three link front, triangulated four link rear, uh, two five coilovers all the way around. Rides really nice with this setup. Um, still got the stock four liter and the automatic in there, not really a whole lot different there. Um, interior wise, we do have a two speed Atlas in here with I believe a five three ratio. I could be incorrect on that with the shifters that go through the factory location. And we have a Switch Pros panel up here with the locker controls. So you got the compressor front and rear locker. Other than that, the interior on this thing's pretty bone stock. Not a whole lot going on in here that you wouldn't see in your regular stock Jeep, but it's nice because when you're sitting in this thing, it's kind of a sleeper. It drives like a nice stock Jeep and looks like not that. Well, this has been a long time coming. We got the ALJ all finished up. I believe she's heading home in a couple days after the weekend. Um, looks a little different than when it came in. <sighs> yeah, feels good to have this thing done. I guess we'll start from the ground up. Um, we had our guys over in the gear and axle shop build a kingpin forward front axle and we have a 14 bolt rear. Uh, pretty common setup that we do on these Jeeps. And those are on the eight on six and a half lug pattern front and rear. We got these nice race line wheels wrapped in uh, 40 inch Nitto trail grapplers. One of my personal favorite tires. Work great on the street, work great in the rocks. Pretty much a great all around tire. If you come down here in the front on this axle, we have our low profile truss on there. And that just gives us an easy place to mount the upper link up there. Bump pads, sway bar mounts, track bar bracket. Everything you need for one of these three links. We got an anorox sway bar on the front, kind of keeps everything stable on the road. Reed knuckles for the crossover steering to move that drag link up so you can roll the tie rod to the top. Got a PSC ram for that hydro assist hooked to the PSC box. Really just makes everything easier to drive on the road. When you're in the rocks, that ram helps you out in a tight bind and uh, yeah. And from there to the suspension, same story front and rear with these. We got the King 2.5 by 12 inch travel shocks, King bumps. The bumps keep you from hitting anything too hard and really jarring you. Um, this three link. Having an unbound system like this really flexes great. Four link, same story. To hold those King coilovers in there, front and rear we have our WFO TJ towers. I believe there's the tall option that we offer. And they work great. They just pretty much stack on the side of the frame, weld right up wherever you need them, and it holds the shock in there nice. Got the motor build inner fenders cut out for those. Tucks them in there nice. You don't really see them. Got 
since we did the Motobilt Highline uh, fenders, we had to get a Verosa hood, which is a fiberglass hood that's pre-chopped for this height. Had to just rise that up a little bit. Really fits the look. We had Ray over at Rooker's paint match all this stuff. Had it powder coated underneath black, so we do have a little bit of black accent on there. Coming to the back, same as the front, as I was saying, you got the king bumps. We have another anti-rock sway bar back here. That, same as the front, keeps everything from swaying too much on the road, but it doesn't inhibit too much flex off-road. So that's a good middle ground. Um, integrated the factory filler into these corners. Here's the motor built rear bumper. And here's the real ticket item we've been selling a lot of lately. These are our cargo baskets. This one's actually made for a JL and we adapted it to the LJ. JL, LJ, that's a little flip around right there. And uh, yeah, that all bolts onto this swing out back here. So that swings out with your, uh, with your tailgate there, tailgate, swing gate, whatever you'd like to call it. Fit a Yeti 65 in there and keep all your ice cold beverages in there. Then if we're moving down from the uh, cargo basket, the motorboat rear bumper here, we have a Genrite high capacity tank for these uh, LJs. I believe it's a 28 gallon tank and that just adds a little extra range and go a little further on the trail because these things do suck gas pushing these big tires and these heavy axles speaking of axles get under here we have the wfo diff cover and our full width truss for the 14 bolt which makes things easy for mounting link mounts and same as the front link mounts bump stops sway bar mounts shock mounts all that simple stuff we have our wfo 5362s under here holding the shocks in at the axle side all of our link mounts on there Oh, I believe uh, he may have left something in here for us. It's a nice cold can of, I don't know, but I'm going to pull one out of Trevor's book and see what that is. Yeah, it's a can of, so yeah, as you can see under here, if you get a little lower, there's the motor belt cross member. Uh, those link mounts index on the frame with bolts and then weld on so that just gives you a nice solid place to mount all your links off of. Everything's super easy to set up off of that. We have our WFO integrated into the truss, the pinion guard, and that bolts through the pinion support on a 14 bolt. Super simple assembly on that as well. Everything lines right up. And it just keeps your pinion and your drive line from getting smashed on those rocks you'll hit out on the trail. If you have too many cans of mystery liquid, that's a very common occurrence. But yeah. Uh, we've been working on this thing for probably two, three months now. It's been a lot of hard work. It's funny how much you forget over those two to three months, what you actually did. But it's all finished up. Works good. Drives good. It's pretty much anything you can ask for in a Jeep. It's one of my favorite builds I've done here so far. And excited to see it out on the trail and doing what it's meant to do. So get out there, get some. And if you want something built right, you know where to send it. Yeah!